Hi, I'm Rex Carden with the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and today we're going to look at how you can take objects offline for testing or debugging or just data analysis when you're not connected to the Eclipse scripting API. As an example, let me show you a case I've got where I've got these three different structures, and I want to test these in my application. I have a GTV, CTV, and PTV and I want them to look just like this, but this would be really complicated to build from scratch. Uh, that's why uh, Varian provides this uh, contouring workspace so you can make these complicated things relatively easy by just uh, painting them in. But I want to do some tests on this object and I don't want to have to be connected to the Eclipse scripting API. Well, what can I do? Um, in general, it's not very easy to to take things offline, but if you're using the Asapi X library, you can serialize out these structures and then deserialize them back into um, Eclipse scripting like objects. So let me show you how to do that. We can go ahead and jump into Visual Studio on our Eclipse workstation and let's go to File, New, Project and we're just going to make a little console application. This is not going to take very much code and we can call it Serializer. Uh, inside this main method here, um, I guess we need to pull in some references first. Let's go ahead and right click our references and say manage NuGet packages. Go to browse and type in Asapi. And here you should see the Eclipse scripting API um, X library. And this is available in different frameworks. I'm on the 13.6. Uh, on this machine right here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I need to install two different packages. I need to install the uh, Asapi X, like the core library, and then I also need to install the Bootstrapper library for 13.6. So I'm going to go ahead and just install the Bootstrapper. That will actually install both of them. I can see that there is a new iteration of the core library by this little blue arrow here. It says there's an update available. So if I click on updates, I can uh, select this and just select update. You always want to stay up to date with the most recent Asapi X library because um, as bugs are introduced, um, those get changed and new versions get uploaded. So that is what you do there. Over here, we just need to create an application just like we normally would. Um, Let's, let's do this on a single thread. When you're using Asapi X, you don't have to be on a single thread. Um, you can do multi-threading, but we're just in a console app. We don't need anything special. When you're, when you're using the Asapi X library to generate your application, you actually have to use um, the bootstrapping library. That's why we had to bring that in, this Asapi X bootstrapping library. One thing we also need to do is we need to add a reference to the uh, the API DLL that's on your computer. So when you install Asapi X, you're going to get this types when already bundled. Um, this contains little little small classes that define structures in the Asapi uh, libraries. But you are going to need to use this API one from the box that you're on. So um, that's in program files x86. Varian Vision and mine's 13.6. Um, you should know how to how to hook that one up. That's that's how you do normal application development. Okay, so we've got all that stuff done. What we need to do is we need to call this uh, this class that's in the bootstrapping library. It's called Facade Initializer. So you need to make sure you have a using statement using a Sapi X bootstrapper, and that there's a static method in there called initialize, and that just that links the Asapi X library, which is actually not dependent on the API library. It links it to the API library so you can call methods like you normally would. And then you are going to make an application. Create application. And I'll just pass in null. I'll put my user ID and password in when we uh, do this, when we run this. And then you can see there's another um, option on this um, method 
and it says whether you want to use a single thread or not. By default, it's false. And in this case, I actually do want it to be on a single thread. And this is not the application class that is in the Eclipse scripting API. This is one, this is a wrapper, which is in the facade namespace of the uh, Eclipse scripting API X library. The reason why we're using facades here is because everything that comes out of this, every time we, we call a method, it's going to be wrapping them in facades. And facades are easier to serialize uh, when you're using the Asapi X library. So let's go ahead and open a patient. say app open patient by ID and the name of that patient I had pulled up is this is the ID of it actually is uh, physics tank and there was a structure set in there let's get the structure sets for that patient and we want the first or the structure set or the ID equals Let's see what it was. Good SS. So that's going to grab that structure set. Now this structure set is still linked to the Eclipse scripting API. So we are going to want to uh, make a separate structure set. I actually don't want all of those structures. You can see there's a chamber and a body structure. I don't care about those. I only want these these three substructures, the CTV, GTV, and PTV. So to get around that, I am going to make a new structure set. Like this. And again, you can do this in the Eclipse scripting API. Um, you cannot do that. Uh, you can do it with the X library, but not in the the normal Eclipse scripting API. And let's pick some structures we want to add to our offline. This is going to be the one we're going to serialize. So we want to take some structures. We want to take the structures where the ID either equals PTV, GTV, or CTV one of those. Any of those will qualify it. Let's save that. Try to space this out so you can see more clearly. Okay, so we're going to save that to a variable called structures. And then let's go ahead and plug those in to our offline little class we just spun up. So we'll tell it the structures that we want to put in the offline are going to be equal to those filtered structures we just made. All right, so that's it. We just created this little offline structure. The only point of this is to serialize it out so we don't have any extra information that's in this real patient. The last thing we need to do is we need to call the facade serializer. Let's see where that is. Light bulb using a SAPI X facade serialization. And there are several methods in here, and the one we're going to use is serialize to file. And you need to pass in the object you want to serialize. That's our S structure set offline. And then we need to give it a path. So let's see. Let me see if I have a path available. That looks good. And I like to end my uh, my files in, in JSON so that I know that's what that's what the format is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run this. It's gonna need to put that in. Okay. So it is serialized. So what does that file look like? Let's see. So here is the file that we made. You can see it's called goodss.json. And this is the format. It's a text file, human readable. 
well, sort of, you can't really read all these numbers. These actually come from the mesh geometry property. Uh, it should be up here somewhere, let's see. Here we go, mesh geometry. Specifically, this is the positions. These are vectors which describe the 3D structure of, uh, well, of the structure. So you don't have to read all this. This is just to show you that it, you can get to it. It's readable if you wanted to uh, open it up in something else. And it's in a standard format. JSON is a very common serialization format. So let's close that. Now let's pull it back in. The way that you pull it back in, let's delete all of our code that we serialized it with. We don't need that. And we're not going to connect to the Eclipse scripting API. So you could imagine we have made a new console application in your imagination. And we're at home now or we're somewhere else that we're not connected to the Eclipse scripting API. We just got that one file at this location. What we're going to do now is deserialize it with the Eclipse scripting API X library. We've got this method called deserialize from file. And that takes, it's not going to work. You have to actually pass in the type that you want to deserialize it as. So that was a structure set that we serialized. And all it takes is the path. And I can just put a breakpoint right here. I think we'll capture that object. Let's see. So let me just expand this breakpoint up. Don't need that. So we can look at our structures and our results. We can see we have three structures. That should be right. Each of them should be should have the CTV, uh, GTV, and the last one should be PTV. You can see we've got all these properties is live is set to false that that tells you that a facade is not actually connected to the Eclipse scripting API at the moment it's offline um, here's our mesh geometry this is where you would pull all the uh, the positions and um, all of the information you got your ROI number um, structure code info is down here the volume different things you can I mean, different pieces of information you can get to um, if you needed to um, also, just to show you that this object right here is just like you're in the Eclipse scripting API, so you can um, you, you can still program against it. Now, uh, none of the methods are going to work. Okay, only the properties have been serialized. Um, there are some tricks you can do to serialize out methods, and I might show those in a later video. But um, this is really just to show you how to get data offline, not how to get a full fake object offline. So hopefully that helps you uh, develop some things. And uh, um, another place you could use this is in unit tests. If you, in fact, that's what I'm doing here. Not really a unit test, but an, it's an integration test. I'm testing to make sure that some uh, piece of code I've got is going to work. And this, I'm going to use this as a test structure. Uh, to test it on a regular basis. So as I iterate my code, I can just run it kind of like a unit test and make sure everything is working like I think it should. All right, uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks.